Hello and welcome. So this is my pipeline processor build and this part over here is the arithmetic and logic unit which I've just finished the circuitry for so I thought I'd make a video outlining its functionality and giving a bit of a demonstration. Over here we have the address registers. They're 16 bits in size which allows me to address 64 kilobytes. These are my general purpose registers. They're all 8 bits. It's the control circuitry which manages these. This is the pipeline. So we've got the fetch unit and two functional units. And here's the ALU. Entering the ALU, we've got the left and right hand inputs. These are 8-bit values because this is fundamentally an 8-bit processor. And I've got four operation select lines. There are a total of 14 different operations supported by the ALU plus the 15th zero index, which is a, a no operation. So that's shift left, shift right, add, add with carry, increment, increment with carry, subtract, subtract with borrow, decrement, and or exclusive or not, and an operation to clear the carry flags. So the flags are over here. We've got the logical carry, arithmetic carry, the zero flag, the sign flag, and the overflow flag. Overflow is kind of like a carry flag, but it applies more to signed values. So you have the left and the right hand inputs. The left hand input is connected to the shift unit, which can output a zero, the input unchanged, or it can shift the input up or down by one bit. The right hand input can perform a variety of logical operations between the right hand and the left hand input and the outputs from those two sides are latched at the end of the first cycle into the addition unit and then the rest of this circuitry up here is to do with control and flags. So let's run some test code. So I've got a program loaded up into the ROM here. Now these first instructions are just initialization, I'm going through and setting all of these registers to zero, but they started off as zero, so we're not seeing a change. And then the first instruction that's executed here is an increment of A. So I follow a sequence of in increments to demonstrate that functionality. And then some decrements. Each time I'm doing a different operation, you should see the operation selection change up here. I've padded different sections of the code with knobs just to, so we can uh, demonstrate it more clearly. So after the decrements, I've left A and C as one, which are the second and third value in the Fibonacci sequence. And this instruction coming up here is an add A comma C. So it's going to add this value to this one. They're both one and that will become two. Now, this instruction has hit pipeline stage one, so the input selections for the ALU have selected A and C, so we're seeing those come in here. When I clock it again, this instruction will move up to pipeline stage two, and the values that have been processed here will move forward to the add unit, which is where, for a simple add instruction, most of the work will get done. Then the result will be displayed here asserted onto the bus from this control line and it will arrive back in the A register. So we've got 2 which is the next value in the Fibonacci sequence. And when we did that this next instruction popped up which is an add A comma C going back the other way and that's already in progress over here. So we've got the 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. You should see that we're completing an 8-bit operation every cycle here. Now this is 233. That's interesting because the next value in the Fibonacci sequence isn't going to fit in an 8-bit quantity. So we do something else. Now when I was describing the operations I said we have add but we also have add with carry. What we have here is the same add we would have done before but this number is not big enough. 
So the instruction following behind it is an add with carry, which is adding B to D. Now both of these are zero, but over here we can see the carry flag has been set. And the add with carry is adding both the two input values and the carry flag together. So here we have our correct answer of 377. So what we're effectively doing here is now 16-bit additions, which is giving us the space to store the larger numbers. So then that's as far as we can go in the Fibonacci sequence with 16-bit registers. So we've also got the shift unit. The shift unit automatically uses the logical carry, so we can compound those up into larger operations as well. So what I've got in the program is a succession of shift lefts for A followed by B, which means we'll be gradually rotating these values around. And last but not least, I've got a demonstration of some of the bitwise logical operations. So this first one is AND A, B. So we're going to AND these two values together on a bit-by-bit -bit basis and store the result in the A register. And we can see here that these two bits aren't set in both and the top two bits aren't set in both. So we should see these two bits and that bit set. Good. Next instruction is XOR B, C. Now XOR, or exclusive OR, is going to perform the equivalent of an OR operation apart from where both bits are set. So in this case we should see this LED change state because it's the only one set over here. And we've got OR A, B. These bits are set in both registers and then the upper three bits are set in one or the other. So we should see these top two bits get set. Now for the final test, I'm going to do a simple move of C into D and then a not D. So we should see all of these LEDs invert their state. Excellent. So I'm really pleased with this. The ALU is probably going to be the largest single module in the processor. Pipeline is going to be quite big. I suppose all of the registers together with their controller are probably going to be larger still, but this is a lot of uh, kind of replicated circuitry here where I've uh, done a, a small board for each register and, and then we add those together as separate modules. So this is, this is going to be the biggest single chunk and so far as I've been able to test it, it's fully operational. I'm going to leave it for a little bit and then I'll probably convert it into a, a PCB. I'm uh, extremely happy with this, very proud of it, and I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.